Hello students, Miss Roll here. Uh, in today's video, we are going to learn how to balance a chemical reaction. For this video, our learning target is I can balance a chemical reaction. So we're gonna talk about kind of what that is, why we do it, and a tool to help you balance reactions. So first of all, why? Why are we bothering to balance a chemical reaction and what exactly does that mean? And the main reason is because this because of this thing called conservation of mass. And basically that means that matter, right, the stuff that makes something have mass, it cannot be created or destroyed, right? All this that has ever existed has always existed and always will exist. It just changes form. Um, and so that means that when a chemical reaction happens, all the stuff that goes in has to also come out of that reaction. So it means the same number of atoms are on the product and reactant sides. Same number of atoms are on the product side and reactant side. Um, or in another way to put this is that the same number of atoms go in as come out of that reaction, right? Because nothing can be created or destroyed. So we need to balance them to kind of identify how much of say a chemical you need to put in to cause a certain reaction to happen, to get a certain uh, amount out of that reaction. That's kind of the end goal of learning how to balance. Another way to think about this is the chocolate chip cookie example. So if I have my chocolate chip cookies and I have, let's say five chocolate chips and one piece of dough and I mix them together and you know I separate them out and I bake my cookies and I have my chocolate chip cookies, even though they've you know, been put together, they've been mixed, they've been baked, I still have the one thing of dough and the five chocolate chips, even though they're in a bit of a different form and mixed together differently, right? So the same amount kind of came out as went in to that reaction. So a tool that we have to help you balance reactions is called RAP. And this is a tool, this is not the answer to any of our balancing problems. When we get to the examples, that'll first of all help you understand these steps I'm about to explain, but also um, we'll show you kind of what the answer will look like uh, to a balancing problem. But in our RAP tool, um, those letters stand for something. So the R stands for reactants. The arrow, the A stands for the arrow, right, that's in the middle of our chemical reaction. And P stands for products right, what comes out of that chemical reaction. And we have some steps to using this RAP formula. So first thing you need to do is you're going to list the atoms that are in the equation. Second step is you need to count the atoms on the reactant side. Third step is you're gonna count the atoms on the product side. And finally, you need to change the big numbers on the examples to balance. Get these steps down. Make sure you have them recorded somewhere. Once we get to the examples, this will make a lot more sense. Okay, so just make sure you have these steps down. We'll go through the examples and these steps will start to make sense. These are the examples that we're going to go through in just a minute. Uh, so make sure that you are ready to try out these examples with us. All right, so here are our examples on using the RAP method to help us balance a reaction. So you'll notice I've got our first example here uh, written out with our blanks for where those big numbers can go in front and multiply the whole compound. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and set up our RAP table. So all I'm doing is writing the word RAP. And I notice I kind of set it up as a big T table um, R is on the reactant side, arrow is right on, or A is right under the arrow, and P is on the product side. So that reminds me kind of what side of our equation is what. Now what I'm going to do is step number one, which happens to be uh, listing our atoms in the equation. And I'm going to do that right under A for arrow. You could also think of it as A for atoms, because I'm going to list what the atoms are that we have. So first of all, I'm looking on the left and I have AL, capital than lowercase. So I know that is one element. Uh, then I have FE, capital lowercase. That's another element. That's iron. And finally, I have the N 
for nitrogen. That's my last element here. So I've done step one. Step two now is count the atoms on the reactant side. So not only am I gonna count how many of each element there are, I'm gonna write them on the R side of my table. So starting with aluminum, I don't have a little number, so I just have one. Fe iron, there's a little three. And nitrogen, we've got the two. If you need help reviewing how to count atoms, go back to that section of our notes. Now I have ALN, no little numbers, so that tells me I have one AL, I have one nitrogen. You'll notice that the elements are not written in the same order on the product side as they were on the reactant side, so make sure you're putting those numbers in the correct place. And also iron, I only have one. Okay, so that was steps two and three, counting atoms on the reactant side, then counting atoms on the product side. Now, change the big numbers to balance. How do I go about doing that? Well, what we're looking for is that the numbers on both sides end up being the same. Okay, so right now aluminum is balanced. Aluminum is good. Iron has three on the reactant side and only one on the product side. So I should change something with my iron. So I know I can only make numbers get bigger. So I'm gonna do something on the product side for my iron. I wanna make it to three. So if I look at where my iron is, it's just one. And I know if I put a three in front, that multiplies three times one, giving me three iron. So I put the big number up top, then I counted and changed the number in my table. There were no other elements in that compound. So I'm only changing iron for that one. So my iron is good. So now I'm gonna keep going down my list and now I have nitrogen and nitrogen is not balanced. So I'm gonna again do something on the product side because that's our smaller number. So I'm gonna go find my nitrogen. It's in this compound. So to get two nitrogen, I know I'd have to multiply it by two, giving me two atoms of nitrogen. But we notice that this compound also has aluminum in it. And remember those big numbers out front multiply the whole compound. So I've also changed the number of aluminum I have. So I'm gonna mark that on my table because I also now have two aluminums on that side. If I look again at my table, now my aluminum is not balanced. So I'm gonna go over to the reactant side where that's the smaller number and fix it. And again, since it's only one, I know if I put a two out front, that will give me a total of two aluminum atoms. And now that is balanced. There were no other elements in this compound, so I'm only changed the aluminum. You can go through and double check your numbers to make sure that they match and make sure that you counted correctly on your reactant side and on your product side. Now, when we're just writing it out, like on paper, this right up here that I'm putting in the box, this would be your answer. Right, that's the equation with the actual numbers in it. Uh, in Schoology, as you're filling in the assignment, you'll wanna remember, if you didn't have to put a number in that spot, we gotta put in a one, just so Schoology knows what's going on. But that is our first example of setting up the wrap table. Now we can go on to our second example. I believe this was number two. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Okay, I'm gonna set up my wrap table. Step one, list atoms in the equation. I have Na for sodium and Cl for chlorine. Step two, count atoms on the reactant side. So that's over here on the left of our arrow. And A, I don't have a little number, so I've just got one to start. CL, I have a little two, I've got two. Step three, counting atoms on the product side. I notice for NA and CL, I do not have a little number next to either of them. So they're both one. And now we're gonna change those big numbers to balance. So if I go down my list, starting at the top, sodium is good, that one's balanced, chlorine, not balanced. 
So I go to the smaller side, which happens to be products, and I wanna end up with two chlorine atoms on my product side. So I know to do that, if I put a two out front, two times one would give me two chlorine atoms. But of course, remember, that number out front multiplied the whole compound. So that also changed how many sodium atoms I have on the product side. So I count it, there are two on that side. I go back to my list, now I need to go and change sodium and A. So I'm gonna look at to the reactant side and find sodium, and I wanna get it to number two. And if I put a two out front, that multiplies my two times one to give me two sodium atoms. You can double check that you counted correctly on both sides and that you have filled in your wrap table correctly and that you put the numbers up here. But again, on Schoology, I would just fill in a one on that spot, that blank spot where we didn't need anything else. And that is how we balance this equation. Let's go on to our next example. So here we have H2O2 uh, reacts to form H2O and O2. Same deal, I'm gonna set up my wrap table. Now I need to list my atoms. So I notice I have hydrogen and oxygen, H and O. And I'm gonna go ahead and count how many I have on the reactant side, we're on step two. Got the little number two, so I have two hydrogens, little number two, and two oxygens. Over on our product side, hydrogen, I've got the little number two. And now we gotta be careful. If we notice, we have oxygen written here and we have oxygen written over here. So we have to count all of them, all of the oxygen atoms on the product side. So I have one oxygen atom here and I have two over here. So one plus two gives me three oxygen atoms, three oxygen atoms. Now this one, uh, you'll find uh, this kind of thing happens a lot when we're balancing, when we have oxygen in multiple compounds, okay? And if I have three oxygen here, it's an odd number, and I have two on the reactant side, it's an even number, I wanna get this oxygen to be an even number. And the easiest way to do that is to find where I had this odd number of oxygen atoms. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a two in front of it so that I end up with an even number of oxygen atoms there. So now I have two times one gave me two oxygen atoms here and I have another two there. So I have a total of four. To backtrack, uh, to kind of point out why I started here, even though this was the bigger number, was because I couldn't turn two into three, right? By multiplying, if I multiplied by one, it would still, still be two. If I multiplied by two, it would go to four. I couldn't get to three. So that's why I chose to start over here and make it into an even number to start finishing balancing, okay? Um, in our compound, where I change, I put the two out front, it multiplies the whole compound. And now I gotta look at my hydrogen and count. Two times two gave me four atoms of hydrogen on that side. So now we're gonna go, you know, start back at the top of our table and balance here. Hydrogen, I have four on the products, but only two on the reactants. I know if I put a two out front, two times two is gonna give me four. So I put my two, in that number slot, giving me four hydrogen atoms. And oxygen was also in that compound, so two times two gave me four. You can go ahead, double check, make sure that you've counted everything correctly, uh, but your answer up here in Schoology, we would put a one in this empty spot to make sure that it knows what we're talking about. But that is our example for number three. And our final example uh, of this video 
We have NaClO3 reacts to form NaCl and O2. I'm gonna set up my wrap table. Step one, list those atoms. So I have Na capital lowercase, so I know that's one element. Cl capital lowercase, I know that's one element. And O, I know that's one element. Okay, there's my elements that I have. So now I'm gonna go ahead and step two, count on my reactant side. So Na has no little number, so it starts with just one. Cl, also no little number right after it, so we have one. Oxygen has our little number three, so I have three oxygen atoms. Now, step three, I'm gonna count the product side. Na, no little number, so we have one. Cl, same thing, also have one. Oxygen, I have two. Okay, uh, again, just like in our last problem, we notice that I have three and two for oxygen three on the reactant side, two on the product side this time. I can't turn two into three, right? No matter what I multiply it by, no whole number is gonna turn that into three. So I'm gonna change my three into an even number. And all I have to do is put a two in front of that compound. Two times three gave me six. So I have six oxygen atoms. But of course, this compound, whole thing gets multiplied by our two. So now I have to count my sodium and my chlorine too. Both of those are one times two. So I also have two atoms of each of those on the reactant side. And now I'm gonna go back to the top of my wrap table. And I'm gonna try to balance my sodium here. So I have two on the reactants, one on the products. I know that if I put a two out front, two times one is gonna give me two sodiums. Same thing with my chlorine, I only had one. I put a two out front, so multiplied by two gave, gave me two. Now we're down to oxygen. I have six on the reactant side, only two on the product side. So to put in front of our O2, I would need to put a three because three times two is gonna give me six oxygen atoms. So those are some examples um, of our balancing problems. They will get harder as you go on. So I'm gonna give you a couple of last hints, last hints as we go on. If you have other things to balance, Balance oxygen last. Come back to that one after you've balanced the other things. Um, just because of how O bonds to things, it ends up uh, changing a lot as you are adjusting other elements. So balance O last. And balance H, hydrogen, next to last. So right before you would do oxygen, balance the hydrogen. When you get to challenging problems, um, these two little suggestions will be really helpful. But otherwise, just work your way from the top of your list going down. And that is it for our balancing reactions uh, problems and uh, practices. If you have questions, please make sure that you let one of us know.